Well, good morning, people of God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I know it's raining outside, but did you bring some energetic worship in the house today? Why don't you give God thunderous worship in this place? Come on. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us, it's a collective thing, let us exalt his name together. Oh, I'm excited about today. I'm excited about the worship experience. I'm excited about God. I'm excited as well about tonight. We have service on tonight. Uh, David Norwood is preaching his first sermon here at Greater Mount Zion. David, why don't you stand? David Norwood has been serving with Kevin uh, in our student ministry. Just an outstanding young man. God's hand is on his life. Yeah, you can sit down there now. You can sit down. That's good. That's good. That, that's good. That was, that was good. That was good. Um, so um, he is uh, the husband of LaKendra. Y'all know her as LaKendra Edwards. Used to be an intern here at our church served with great distinguishment in our church and we just love her so I had to get to know David real well <laughs> and uh, he's just an outstanding outstanding young man on today he's going to be preaching his first sermon that's this evening and so I know I know there's no football on anything like that so uh, it'd be a great night to come out and give God praise amen we used to give God the whole day y'all remember that just give God just a whole day. Just give him the whole day. All of the day. From beginning to end. From three in the morning to... You know how when you talk about the past, you just start exaggerating. <laughs> just give him the whole day. Well, this is, um, this is a day in which we're continuing this God series, and um, I'm excited about the message on today. Today, from the uh, text that uh, uh, Reverend Coteney read aloud in your hearing, we're talking about the fact that God is sovereign. I want you to say that with me. Say sovereign. Sovereign. Yeah, he's a sovereign God. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to declare your word today. We realize that nothing is more important than worshiping you, worshiping you in song, worshiping you through the ministry of the word. And we pray that you would feel this moment, feel this day with your presence. It's kind of gloomy outside, but our hearts are not gloomy. Our souls are not gloomy. The sun is shining. And we pray that the brightness of his light, Lord, would give us joy and give us renewed energy and renewed peace on this day in Jesus' name. name amen, amen. God is sovereign if God is ruling the world why does it not feel like it If God is really in charge, why are there seasons in our lives in which it feels like everybody else is in charge but God? Hanging in art galleries all over the world are unique expressions of art called anemographic paintings. An anemographic painting is unique in that if you look at it with a frontal view, if you look at it head on, it looks undefined. It looks unintelligible. It doesn't look attractive. But if you dare move to the side and get a different view, suddenly you will see the beauty of the artist's work. What was unintelligible suddenly becomes intelligible. The undefined becomes defined. The unattractive takes on a whole new level of beauty. Nemographic paintings, they're hanging in art galleries all over the world. And they teach us this fundamental and basic principle about life. Here it is. How you look at a thing will determine what you see. <laughs> Friend, let me tell you something from street level view, from a street level view, 
In this life, sometimes it looks like life is chaotic. On the street level, it looks like God is not in charge. But if you ever get a view from a different angle, if you could get the view from the top, you would see that not only is God in charge, but that the quality of your life is linked to whether or not you say yes to his authority. God is in charge of this life, but you got to have the, the proper angle to see it. And so that's what we want to talk about today, the view from the top. What does God see when he look at, looks at your world? What does God see when you look at life and it appears to be chaotic? What does God have to say to us? God would say to us, I'm sovereign. Now, what does that word mean? That's a $25 word. It's an elegant word. It's a glamorous word that simply means God is running all of this. Thank you. Thank you. That's all it means. It means that he's running all of the details and the affairs in your life. God did not create the earth and then go lay back in some cosmic lazy boy recliner and just let life proceed on. No, God is intimately consciously, intentionally involved in the affairs of this life. What does that mean, Clark? That means he's running this. He's running, he's running the affairs of this life. Now, it may not look like it. It may not feel like it. That just means I don't have the right angle yet. And so today I want to give you the view from the top. What does this sovereignty mean? I'm glad you asked. Here it is. First of all, sovereignty means that God is ruling without rival in your life. He is ruling and he's ruling without rival in your life. The text assures us of that. The text that Pastor Colton had read. He says, I want you to acknowledge this day and I need you to take this to heart. That the Lord is the only one who is ruling in heaven. He's the only one who's ruling on the earth. And to respond to him is so pivotal that it determines whether or not life will go well with you. It'll determine your stability, whether or not you'll be able to stay in the land. This is a picture of stability. God didn't promise us land today, but he did promise us security. Thank you. It's a picture of stability. I want to give you a, a, a remix of that from Isaiah. Isaiah says it like this, Isaiah 44 and 6. I love his statement. He says, of God, God speaking through Isaiah, I am the first and the last. There is no other God. Now look up here. Here's what God is saying. I'm it. <laughs> look here, that, that's nobody else. Who, who are you going to call on other than me? Who do you need other than me? I, I'm ruling with our rival. I don't have any competition in your life. If you got my blessing, it doesn't really matter what anybody else says about you. <laughs> if this God is for you, who can be against you? I'm ruling without rival. Now, so let me tell you what that means. Let's, let's bring it to street level. Here it is. Everything that takes place in your life, everything, is either caused by God or allowed by God. It's Father filtered. So no, no use in me, no use in you trying to resist all of the things that are happening, trying to bind the devil over everything. Everything that happens in my life, whether it should have happened or not, it's either God caused or God allowed. And so grow from it. Respond to it with the humility that you recognize that it's true of a God who is in control. He didn't let this happen capriciously. You understand what I'm saying? He says, I am God. There's, no, there's nobody else but me. Quit blaming your problems on your boss. Quit blaming your problems on your neighbor. Quit blaming your problems on your wife. Quit blaming your problems on your husband. God said, I either sin it or I allowed it. <laughs> Somebody here, you mad at God because you're sick. Listen. Everybody in the world will be sick one day. Well. 
You see, we got to have a mature faith. God hadn't taken a vacation. God hadn't dropped you out of his schedule. He's God. There's nobody else beside me. I save you a whole lot of time. A whole lot of counseling. A whole lot of conversation. Now understand this. Here's, what, here's also what we have to understand. Refusing to embrace the sovereignty of God doesn't rob him of his sovereignty. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think that, you know, because they upset with God or something, that somehow God is less God. God listen, God is just as much God when you embrace and say yes to his sovereignty as he is if you say no to his sovereignty. It doesn't take, it doesn't take, it, it doesn't de, uh, de, disempower God. And so the denial of my sovereignty, but, I mean his sovereignty, doesn't change the fact of his sovereignty. Now I can deny it, but it really won't change anything. Because he's God. And he can't do anything but be God. Thank you for that. <laughs> And he will be God in your life. He'll be God in my life. He'll be God in our collective lives. This is who he is. God ruling is just God being God. And you can't take rulership out of God because that's who God is. And so he, he's ruling whether I know it, whether I embrace it or not. Now, I have a Hilton Honors reward card. And so whenever I travel, because I like getting rewards. <laughs> Whenever I travel, I am going to locate a Hilton property. Now, Hilton properties, Johnny Lee, uh, they include the Hilton, <laughs> Double Tree. Ooh, yeah. They got the cookies at the Double Tree. <laughs> uh, it includes. It includes Embassy Suites, right? Uh, in addition to that, it includes Hampton Inn. No, those are the primary Hilton properties. I was thinking about this sermon uh, the other day, and it occurred to me, even though I've been going to Hilton properties for about 10 years now, because I have a Hilton Rewards card, I've been doing this for a long time now, but it occurred to me, I don't even know who the CEO of Hilton is. I don't know if Paris, runs the Hilton. I don't know if Paris's sister is the CEO. I don't know if Paris's mama, Paris's father, Paris's grand. I don't know if the Hilton properties, I don't even know if they are still in the Hilton family. Maybe there's a guy named Robinson. Who, <laughs> yeah, who bought them out a few years ago. And he or his family owns the Hilton properties. And I'm going to tell you something else. I'm not really that concerned about who owns the Hilton properties. But now, do you think that the CEO of Hilton is somewhere thinking to himself? You know, I wish that little Clark. I just really wish he would, he would figure out that I'm the owner of this facility. It doesn't change who he is. Just because I don't know and I hadn't Googled it yet and I'm not interested, it doesn't change the fact that he is still the CEO. And God said, you don't have to embrace me as sovereign. It, you, your, your lack of interest, your, your, your pre-Christian friends, lack of interest, the, the ideas of your neighbor, they don't change whether or not I'm sovereign. I'm still God. There is no other beside me. God says, I'm it. I'm it. But now, let's go further. There's a profound difference between the CEO of Hilton and the CEO of the universe. You see, even if I got to know the CEO of Hilton, it may change my accommodations a little bit at the Hilton Hotel, but it wouldn't really change much in my daily life. Oh, but if you got to know the CEO of all creation, that would not only change what happens in this room, that would change what happens in every room of your life. When we live our lives, 
to say yes to God. Everywhere we go, we'll feel like we're in the presidential suite. You know why? Because you are. Friend, if you say yes to God, you can live a five-star life on a two-star salary with a one-star man. Yes, you can. This is the power of God. He's sovereign. And in the process of it, you'll be earning points for eternity. <laughs> here's, here's the first one. Why, 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 do, why does it feel like God is not in charge when he really is? It's because we don't, we don't realize God, God don't have any competition. Anything that happens in your life is father filtered. We blaming stuff on the devil as if God is not. Anything we don't like is the devil's fault. Or it's other people's fault. See, that, 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 that disempowers God in your mind. It doesn't disempower him in reality. It disempowers God in your mind. Did you get that? Okay. Here's the next one. Talking about the sovereignty of God. God is ruling for his pleasure. He's ruling for his pleasure. He's not ruling your life or my life through a suggestion box. <laughs> He's not taking suggestions from us. He's ruling for his own pleasure. God is pleased with his pleasure. And, and this is what spiritual growth is. Being pleased with what pleases God. And a lot of times we feel like God is not ruling because when God doesn't do what pleases us, we assume, I mean, obviously we are right. So we assume that he must not be all of the God that he claims to be because certainly he would understand my life from my perspective. You can't even say amen there, can you? you just... Mm -hmm. I'm trying to save you some tear-filled nights here. Listen, God is not ruling according to our plan. He's ruling according to his plan. Now let me prove it to you. Psalm 15, verse 3. Psalm 15, verse 3. I got it up here. Look at it. Our God is where? He's in heaven. And what does he do? Somebody tell me. He does whatever pleases him. There it is. He does whatever pleases him. Now, God is not trying to be dismissive here. He's not trying to be unkind. He knows that what pleases him is the best thing for you. And eventually his pleasure will be your pleasure. But you got to grow up into understanding that over time. Now, let me ask you, how many of you ever had children in the room? Let me see where you are. So, oh, so y'all going to get this intuitively. When your son was five years old, first learn how to go to the restroom, learn how to eat by himself, learn how to carry on. No, I mean, he did it before five. Come on, stay with me. Yeah. But, I mean, he had a few things under his belt now at five. Just, just a few things. So, um, you didn't. Yeah, that would be a real problem if he didn't get it to five. So your son, daughter, they, they, got a, they understand a few things about life. They're doing well. They're maturing. You think this is the greatest child in the world. You wouldn't go to your child and say, you know what, son? I need you to give me some tips on successful living. I mean, you're five now. I mean, please help me. Help me. I, I, I need to know how to manage life better and manage my schedule. You, you wouldn't do that because you know at five years old, no matter how brilliant your child is, in fact, your child may one day even be more brilliant than you, but at five, that child cannot teach you anything about life. This is why God is not ruling by suggestion box. Against the backdrop of God's eternal experience, you and I have been living about five milliseconds with respect to our God. We have only been living a few moments with respect to eternity, but from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. He knows what we need and he knows how to do what he's doing. Who 
are we to contradict the eternally wise creator of the universe? As if he doesn't know what he's doing with my life. He, he knows. And he says, when, when, when what pleases me pleases you, you'll know too. <laughs> His pleasure today becomes our pleasure tomorrow. God is most glorified when his people are most satisfied in him. He said, I'm ruling according to my pleasure. And this is spiritual growth. When, when my pleasure becomes your pleasure, then you'll understand me a lot better. But until you understand that, you'll think I'm doing something wrong in your life. You'll think I don't understand your feelings. No, it's because I do understand your feelings. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing.